In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up RetroArch for Android. The phone I am using is a Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus, and the controller I will be pairing it with is the GameSir X2 Pro Type-C controller. All right, guys, the first thing we're gonna do is open the Google Play Store. Let's go up to the search bar and type in RetroArch. You're gonna see plus and you're gonna see the standard retro arch. We're gonna download the standard retro arch. Go ahead and click install. Once the download is finished, go ahead and click on play. You need to grant access to read external storage. Click OK. Allow retro arch to access photos, media, and files on your device. Allow. And you want to hit allow, that way RetroArch can locate your ROMs when you're ready to load in your games. Now what you want to do is hit load core, and then download a core. Now cores are basically individual console emulators, all located on RetroArch that you have to download separately. There are a lot of cores in RetroArch, and some consoles have multiple cores you can download. You can't hurt anything by downloading random cores for whatever system you prefer. Just play around with them because some cores may work better than others with your phone. Once you find a core you would like to download, all you need to do is tap on it. The core I'm going to download for this video is Genesis Plus GX. Tap on it, and as you can see, your core is downloaded. Now let's go back. And now we want to go to load content. Now you can load up a game you would like to play, but first you have to know where your games are located at on your phone. Now you may have to search these files before you find your games, but once you do, all you have to do is click on the game you would like to load up and the game should start. Now, if you only have one core installed that can run that game, then the game will just start. Now I went back and downloaded a second Sega Genesis core just to show you guys what it would look like when you try to load a Genesis game up with two cores available. So let's go back to load content, locate my games again, and I'm gonna load up Sonic the Hedgehog 3 again. And see this time, it doesn't jump right back into the game, it gives me the option to select which core I would like to use. Select your core, and the game will start. Now, if you would like to add all of your games into RetroArch at one time, I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's come down to the bottom and click on the three little dots and then click on import content, scan directory, locate where your games are, and then you want to select scan this directory. Now let's go back, 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 back. Once you're back on the playlist page, scroll to the bottom and you're going to see the consoles that you just uploaded ROMs for. So I have some Super Nintendo games and some Sega Genesis games. If I click on Super Nintendo, it's going to show the games that I just uploaded with box art. Same thing for Sega Genesis, the games I uploaded with box art. Now let's open Sonic the Hedgehog 3 again. Run. Now when you're in a game, if you would like to go landscape mode, all you need to do is just flip your phone to the side and you will go into landscape. If you are using the touchscreen buttons and you wanna change your D-pad to a joystick, click on this little circle right here and that changes it to a joystick. If you would like to fast forward, you can find your fast forward button over here. And if you would like to get to the quick menu, Click on the little retro arch logo. And here we have a bunch of options. You have the option to restart to the beginning of the game. You can take a screenshot, you can save state, you can load state. You have your options where you could change your button layout. You could change the touchscreen buttons around. You can enter cheat codes, shaders, where you can make your image of the game look different. Just a ton of options. We're gonna go ahead and select on-screen overlay. Now for those of you that will be using the on-screen touch controls, if you would like to change the default look, then you wanna scroll down and select overlay preset. Then go up to parent directory and scroll down and look for whatever console you are playing right now, which in our case is Genesis. So we're gonna click on Genesis and then we're gonna select Genesis overlay. 
Now, if we go back to the game, as you can see, we have a new button layout. It's the classic Genesis controller. Now, if you're gonna be using a Bluetooth controller or USB-C controller with your phone, then you wanna get rid of those on-screen touch buttons. So go back to quick menu. You wanna scroll back down to on-screen overlay. And on display overlay, you wanna turn this off. This will get rid of those on-screen touch buttons. Now, the great thing about RetroArch is that most of the cores will automatically lay your buttons out for you, so you don't even have to set your controller up. It's just plug and play, basically. Now, if you somehow download one of those cores that your controller doesn't work for, let me show you how to map your buttons out. Let's go back, and you wanna find controls in the quick menu. Right here, controls, and then you wanna go to port one controls, and from here, you can map your buttons out. But as you see, my buttons are already mapped out for this core because this core actually maps the buttons out for me. But if it didn't, this is where you guys can come and map your own buttons out. Nintendo. The 16-bit Genesis system by Sega. Genesis does it all.